Ooh, what it do, what it do, Scooby-Doo. We're going to find a mystery tonight, and it is titled, Who Deserves the Title Shot at Middleweight? Who should be the rightful next guy in line to try and dethrone the champ? Um, because there's a bit of discussion about it. Now, obviously, Israel Adesanya and Drickus Duplessis signed, sealed, delivered for UFC 305 in Perth. That's what we're getting. That is the title fight, and... Nothing anyone can do is going to change that at this current juncture. Maybe there's an injury. Maybe there's some other external factors that cause one of them to pull out. And then an opportunity is presented to some top middleweight to step in. And who knows if they'll do an interim title or some bullshit like that. But, you know, I'm just saying things can happen. We've seen uh, fights change before. And the context of championship matchups be altered ahead of the fight. That's fine. Uh, but at present, nothing you can do. Drake is too plessy and Adesanya. Now, there's one person who is a little bit frustrated with that reality, and instead of putting some exclamation points beside his name, is wanting to sit out. And I, 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 I want to say that that's okay in some way, shape, or form. And, you know, guys sitting on the sidelines and then getting granted title shots— We've seen it happen. I think Stipe was on the sidelines for a year or so after the DC loss, and then boom, gets it again. Um, I'm sure which one that was in the the trilogy. I'm I'm gonna assume it was that first fight with with the loss. Um, but I I I have never really understood it by and large because the division passes you, and other contenders can put on performances that leapfrog your absence from the ring. And that's kind of what I'm seeing, at least, that middleweight with a couple guys. And so I'll just get specifics going. It's Sean Strickland. So Sean on Twitter uh, yesterday was saying, The thought that Whitaker gets a title shot before me is fucking wild. Bro, you're 0-3 with a stoppage, lol. I beat both of those individuals. Do rankings matter? Do the right thing, UFC. Um, now, obviously, you can see my reply, which we're going to get into. But um, he's obviously referencing his... Fights with Adesanya and Drake is 2 plus C, in which Robert Whitaker came up short on three different occasions. Um, even though there's a bit of controversy with, I think, the Adesanya rematch, some people saying, oh, Robert got it done. Either way, it doesn't matter. Sean's correct in the fact that Whitaker is 0 and 3. Um, and then cites his victories against both those individuals. Cool. I'm suggesting here that he shouldn't get a title shot off of beating one and three in his last four, Paulo Costa, and maybe mentioning the fact that him and Rob is the perfect number one contender eliminator. So here's Paulo Costa's uh, tapology in the last... Ah! In the last... Come on, work with me. Okay, so he, since 2020, when Costa lost to Israel Adesanya, then he loses to Marvin Vittori in what was a very memorable fight week of him altering the weight class and seemingly not giving much of a fuck about much else. Then beats Luke Rockhold, who I'm, I don't have it off the top of my head, but I believe there was a bit of an absence. And again, Luke was kind of on a string of losses as well. That fight was... Exciting in some ways, right? Because I don't think many expected Luke to survive. Um, and no disrespect, but I, I recall that fight week. Many people suggesting that, oh, this is going to be a great way to get back on track for Paulo Costa. And I think he struggled a lot more than people thought. Then loses to, to uh, Strickland and Whitaker. So, and I'm going to talk about that Paulo Costa Robert Whitaker fight in just a little bit. But one in four in his last five over the last several years, and specifically when Strickland beats him, right, coming off of an existing loss. So it's it's not like Paulo Costa was on a tear. It's not like this was a guy that had momentum in the division. So for that to be Sean's only win since losing the belt to Drickus to plus C, and again it was a split decision. Right There was uh, one judge who scored it for Paolo who should never be uh, a, a judge again. <laughs> I think it's dumb that that was a split decision. Either way, here it is. Um, I just don't, I mean, I, I don't think that that warrants a title shot considering that he got his title shot off of Abus and Nasruddin Imovab. Now, Imovab has gone on to be a top five contender in the division and I, I don't didn't love the last 
you know, call. It wasn't Nasser Dean's fault that Jason waved it off a bit early. Uh, but either way, that exists. And so, I don't know, sketchy circumstances to get the first title shot. Huge upset win to capture the belt. Immediately loses it. And, I mean, yes, it was close, but I, I kind of would prefer to see another win tacked on um, against someone who is top five because at this current, you know, moment when he was fighting these two, Abus wasn't ranked, Nasruddin I don't believe was top five, and Paolo Costa's not top five. So it's it's kind of like Sean hasn't beaten the people that are really at the upper echelon of the division um, when they're presently there. And feels that beating Paolo Costa, who, again, is not exactly on a tear, that he can just sit out and wait, which I, I'm sorry, I just don't really love. Um, now, now I want to I wanna tack this on as well, because I said, hey, Sean needs one more. So does Whitaker, in my opinion. So does Whitaker, given the fact that, yes, he is 0-3 against Adesanya and DDP combined. Um, but, I mean, he beat Paolo Costa four months before Sean Strickland did it, and then goes and smokes Ikram Alaskarov, who, yes, took it on very short notice, uh, but was undefeated, had a lot of hype, and uh, it didn't matter. One minute and 50 seconds was all that Whitaker needed. That's a very impressive performance. Hell, kind of reminds me of the impressive performance that Sean Strickland had against another unranked guy that got pole vaulted into a position. And guess what that did for Strickland? Gave him a title shot. Oh, but what came before? A win over, you know, again, a guy lower ranked in the division? What came before? A win over a guy lower ranked in the division? So, like, it's kind of it's kind of funny for Strickland to, you know, shit on Whitaker for his past results when, at present, Whitaker's kind of done exactly what Strickland did to get a title shot <laughs> like you know I, I I'm sorry but there's a lot of parallels here and I'm not suggesting Whitaker deserves one that's not what I'm saying at all uh but I'm I'm simply saying that we have the clearest number one contender matchup uh in a while I mean Whitaker and Strickland fighting to me solidifies the next person up and they ha they should because I don't want to say they have to <laughs> I was about to about to have a verbal slip up um but no I I, I truly believe that they should because because, again, reality is Adesanya and Drickus are fighting in August. I imagine that there's going to be a three-month, you know, four-month, potentially five or six months on the shelf for whoever wins that fight. And so the belt's not going to be up for grabs until quarter two of 2025. I mean, Strickland, do you really want to wait that long? Do you really want to wait that long? Especially... You know, when that gives Robert Whitaker the time to tack on another win. You know, let's say Whitaker goes out there and beats up Nasruddin Imovov, a guy who's on a tear in the division, a guy who is highly touted at number four in the middleweight rankings. If Whitaker does that, and he's on a three-fight win streak of top 15 names, knocks out a, a dark horse in his main event, then goes and beats up Nasruddin, that's kind of hard to deny. And that would leapfrog Sean Strickland's decision over Paolo Costa, uh, who, again, Robert Whitaker beat him months prior. I, I'm sorry, gang. I mean, am I speaking some insanity? Am I speaking some lunacy? Um, which, again, is, is kind of like what the response was to my tweet. So let's head back over to that territory and bring it all back up. So, um yeah, but Whitaker deserves it off beating an unranked zero good wins Alice Skarov and after losing to Drickus and getting finished, which is a weird misunderstanding. Rob's the perfect number one contender fight, which is my implication that, no, what Whitaker did is not enough. I feel like that's pretty obvious. Uh, you versus Rob is the perfect number one contender eliminator. That goes without saying that I feel Rob needs to do a little bit more. Uh, but okay, I mean, reading comprehension is not a strong suit of many people on Twitter. No worries. No worries. Um, this this other one right here addresses, you know, I I Israel Adesanya getting the shot at Drickus. For what? Lost the title, won it back, lost again, doesn't have to fight anybody to get another shot. Meanwhile, Sean loses his belt and has to fight multiple times now. So, that's equating Israel Adesanya and Sean Strickland and, and putting them on the same platform in all 
ways, shapes, and forms. And I disagree with that wholeheartedly. Now, no disrespect. And I want to, at the outset of this point, state that Israel Adesanya sitting on the sidelines since September of 2023 and then getting this title shot, um, you know, 12 months later against DDP, I'm, I don't love it. I don't love it. I wish that Adesanya had a bounce back performance, and then this would have been a little bit more warranted. Um, but but what I want to remind people of is that this guy has headlined, I think, eleven pay per views. Right? He lapped the division since he beat Kelvin Gastelum in twenty nineteen. It's been nothing but activity and main events on top of uh, main events. Now, yes, does he have some losses sprinkled in there when he went up? Against Jan Blachowicz, lost that undefeated record, sure. Then Alex Perea, who TKO'd him in round five. What, what, a fantastic fight. Um, got the bounce back win, right? And then drops the belt to Sean Strickland immediately. Yes, I don't love the fact that now he's being given this shot and could theoretically become a three-time UFC middleweight champion without having a, a bounce-back performance, a reminder performance, a, hey, I'm still here, I'm still making waves at the ripe age of 34. Um, but but I also weigh what he's done in the division. And, I mean, we've seen instances like this occur before. Let me remind you, George St. Pierre uh, came off the shelf, what, four years? I think he was retired and then beat up Michael Bisping and got a championship and then, you know, then walked off into the sunset. People seem to love that. People seem to really cherish that. Now, Adesanya and GSP are in different levels of accomplishment and, and I would say, prestige uh, with what they, they've done in their careers. I'm not saying that they're on the same playing field. But what I would say is that Israel Adesanya and George St. Pierre is a hell of a lot closer than Sean Strickland and Israel Adesanya. Again, congrats to Sean on winning that belt against Izzy, but I, I look at what he's accomplished at middleweight, and um, I just feel that there's a little bit more that he could do. Uh, you know what I'm saying? And yes, did he headline a pay-per-view against Adesanya? For sure. Uh, did he headline a pay-per-view against Drickus Duplessis? For sure. Those are great uh, you know, events. But... That's still, I believe, nine pay-per-views less than Israel Adesanya. Is me even mentioning pay-per-view main events a worthwhile factor? Maybe not, and maybe you disagree, and maybe you have a different point, and I'd love to hear it. Let me know down below. I feel like Paulo Costa, or excuse me, not Paulo Costa, uh, Robert Whitaker and Sean Strickland is a, it's a no-brainer. It's a no-brainer. Book that fight for... You know, MSG in November or, or, or earlier. Hell, maybe even put it on the same card, right? Maybe put them as the co-main uh, or something like that. Who knows? Uh, I, I think that's a little bit early, <laughs> too, too early, or excuse me, too late. You know, we're in July and the event's next month, so they probably can't. And Sean Strickland obviously doesn't want to. Um, but I just, I just feel that Sean consistently refusing to fight Robert Whitaker is a weird look for a guy who always loves to say, I'm going to do the man dance with anybody. I'm going to go to war in there. I don't care who. Um, but, you know, when now we've arrived at the perfect number one contender fight, it's, no, fuck that guy. I'm going to set out for my title shot. And that sentiment just doesn't agree with me. I just don't. I can't. I can't get on the same side as it. So that's my thought. Let me know what you guys think, and I will see you in the next one.